how to set up in-app purchases and in-app subscriptions for your Flutter app on Android and iOS. I will show you exactly how you can monetize your Flutter app by displaying some packages to the users that they can buy as a one-time payment or on a subscription basis, which is then automatically renewed on a monthly or yearly basis. And we will also use RevenueCat for managing these subscriptions. Do you want to learn Flutter in a better and faster way? Then simply join our 12-week Flutter training on heyflutter.com, where you master all the Flutter topics such as Dart, UI design, state management, Firebase, clean architecture, databases, and so on, by watching our structured courses that help you for each topic to go from a newbie until an expert level in Flutter. In this video, we will not use the official Flutter package in-app purchase, and this has one main reason. For the validation of purchases, you need to write a complete backend that communicates with the Apple Store server and the Google Play server. Instead, we will use RevenueCat, a better variant if you want to save time, because their server will handle this purchase validation for you, so you can focus on building your Flutter app instead of taking days and weeks to implement also the backend server. All in all, we will follow the official documentations of Flutter and RevenueCat for integrating in-app purchases and subscriptions by going through three simple steps. Firstly, we will set up in-app purchases and subscriptions for Android and iOS. On top of it, we will configure then RevenueCat. Secondly, we will integrate in-app purchases and subscriptions into the Flutter app. And lastly, we will give the user access to special features in your Flutter app in case they have the right subscription status. Before we get started with these three steps, we will quickly implement the fundamentals of this purchases Flutter package into our Flutter app. Therefore, I have created here a simple UI with a button and if we click on this button, then we want to show all the products that we later configure and which the user can then buy inside of our Flutter application. Let's simply get started with this elevated button that I have created and if we press on it, then we go inside of this fetch offers method. And here inside we want to fetch then all the offers, all the products that we want to sell to our user and that we want to display here in our app. And therefore I create here a new file purchase API and here inside we create then this method to fetch our offers, our products and therefore we simply call this Flutter purchases package and here you have this get offerings method and with this we get then all the offerings that we want to show then in our UI. And finally, we want to get the current offer that we have defined later within our dashboard. And this offer we want to simply return then here inside of a list. And in case our offer is not existing, then we want to return here an empty list. So all in all, with this simple code, we fetch then all the products that we later want to show here in our app and which the user then can later purchase. And lastly, we want to check if there are any errors occurring while we are fetching our products. And secondly, we also want to create then here an init method, which we later want to call. And here we get then later an API key, which we need to configure. And with this, we can then set up our purchases API so that we later can call this method here to get our products. All right, and finally, we want to go here back to this page. So we have fetched now all of our offers and we also want to display them. And therefore, you can first of all print it simply to the console. In case we later face any issues in getting here our offerings, I also want to add here another case. So in case our offerings are empty, then we want to simply show here an error message so that you later get noticed about that we have no plans found yet. And in my case, I want to display then the offer inside of a more complex UI. So here I also create then a bottom sheet and inside of it, I create then here this paywall widget. And this is basically this paywall widget that you see here. So we basically display then here all of our products. And later I will anyway show you how this paywall widget is working in more detail. And also lastly, what you need to do to make use of this, make sure that you go to your PubSpec JAML file and here under your dependencies, you need to include then this purchases Flutter package. Next, we want to follow here this official guide step by step to create then our in-app purchases and in-app subscriptions inside of our Flutter application. And we want to start here directly with the third step to set up our store. So in this video, I will show you how you can configure the Google Play Store 
And here we will then configure the products that the user can later buy on your Android platform. And you can do this also later for the App Store Connect, which we will then look at in the next video so that you can also sell your products on iOS. Next, as a prerequisite for this video, you need to have your Flutter app already released on the Google Play console. If you don't have a release inside of this testing track or inside of this production track, then simply watch the video that I have linked under this video in the description. And with this, you will learn how you can put your Flutter app inside of the Google Play console. Another prerequisite for continuing with this video is that you need to put here this permission vending billing inside of your Android manifest file. And after this, create then a new release here and also upload your app bundle again to the Google Play console. In case you forgot to upload your app bundle with this permission inside of your Android manifest file to the Google Play console, then you will get here this error and you cannot configure then the in-app products that we want to configure right now. All right, let's get started by going inside of the all app section and then we go here to the setup section to the payments profile. And here inside of this section, you should see a button create payments profile where you need to click on and there you need to fill then all the information so that you later can get the money from all the payments which you have sold inside of your Flutter app. All right, after you have then created your payments profile, you can go back to the dashboard of your app that you have released. And then you go here basically down to the product section. And here you see the in-app products and the subscriptions. And we want to get started to configure some subscriptions. Let's get started by creating a subscription. First of all, you need to supply here a product ID and this product ID cannot be changed or cannot be reused and it has to be unique between all of your applications. Therefore, it is recommended that you have a specific structure for your product ID. So it consists then of the app name and then the price of the subscription, the duration and optionally you can also put here these inside. So in my name here, I want to create it for this app. Then I have here the price and lastly, it is then the duration of this subscription. All right, back in the subscription page, I put here then my product ID inside and then you need to scroll down and here you can then give it a name and this is then publicly viewable during the subscription. And you also want to give it here some description, which is also publicly viewable. And then you can scroll here down and here you can then select a billing period. So you can choose here that it should recur monthly or yearly. So first of all, we want to create here a monthly one and later we will also create a yearly. So I choose here in this billing period monthly and I also want to set a price. And in my case, I want to set here then exactly this price that I have defined already. And after some seconds, he will also create here for all of the other countries, the right prices because each country has other currencies and so on. And then you can simply click here on apply prices. And finally, you click then on save and after you click on activate. And now this subscription is active, so we can go here back at the top to our subscriptions and you see also the status of our subscription is active. And here you see then a quick overview of your subscription. The same way I have also created here this yearly subscriptions. I have simply changed here the billing period to yearly and with this every year the subscription will be renewed. And I also click on save and also make sure to activate this subscription. And now if I go back, we have here two subscriptions. One is for monthly and the other one is yearly subscription. All right, these two subscriptions that we have created will be then later displayed exactly within our application. So we have here the name and this is basically the name that we have to find and also the description that is also then here displayed. And of course the price to which the user can buy your subscription package. And as you can see later, we have then the monthly and yearly subscription here inside. So it's basically the two subscriptions that I have here defined. All right, now we want to go back to the official documentation and we want to follow right now step one and step two. So step three, we have already completed by setting up the subscriptions in the Google Play console. 
For step one, you need to go to revenuecat.com and then you click here on this button try for free to create your account. And with RevenueCat, you can make your in-app purchases and subscriptions more easy in the implementation. So the main advantages are that the purchases are validated by their backend and also they normalize the data between the platform's App Store and Play Store for the subscriptions because they work a bit differently and they normalize this data so you can use it inside of one API and you also have one single dashboard instead of two dashboards where you can then analyze the subscriptions and in-app purchases from one single place. All right, we have already created our RevenueCat account and also have put here the Android package name inside. And next we need to define the service account credentials so that RevenueCat can communicate with the Google Play console. And this is needed so that they can manage all of our in-app purchases and subscription products. Therefore click here on this I. And here we have to follow some setup steps so that we can connect RevenueCat with the Google Play console. Therefore go to your Google Play console and here within the menu you need to go to the setup section and API access. Next you have to click then on this choose a project to link button and after you have to agree to the terms. And I have already done this so I can show you only step 2 right now. So here you need to click then on this create new service account button. And after this you need to click on this google platform link. Next you need to click then on this button create service account. Give it some name that you like and also click then on create and continue. Here inside we need to grant then some permissions by defining here two different roles. So click here on role and here inside you type pub sub admin and then you select it. And also click here on this button add another role and here we want to type then this time monitoring viewer and scroll here all the way down and then select here this monitoring viewer. And finally you can scroll here all the way down and click on continue and you can also click here then on done. And finally you click then on this newly created service account and here inside you need to go to the tab keys. Click on add key and then you create here a new key and make sure that you have selected JSON and then click here on create. And this will then download our JSON key and you can also open this then up. Make sure that you copy here then all the content. And lastly you go then back to RevenueCat and here you paste then exactly the service account credentials inside. And with this we have configured the communication between the Play Store and RevenueCat and finally you can click then on this button add. And finally we have to do here one more step so we also need to grant financial access to RevenueCat. Therefore go here back to your API and you can click here on done. And here inside you see then the service account that you have created and you need to click on grant. Here you need to scroll then a bit down to the account permissions and make sure that you have ticked here the same as in the document. So we need to go here to the financial data and tick both of them. And finally you can then click on this invite user button and click also on send invitation. And now you need to select here your user from your list and then click here on manage. Scroll a bit down and then you come here to the app permissions and you need to click on add app. Choose here your app from the Google Play Store and then click on apply. Click again on apply. And make sure that you click here on save changes and also click on yes. Important to notice that it can now take up to 36 hours until you can then make some purchases with RevenueCat. Alright, let's now go back to the page where you have created before your RevenueCat account and also the RevenueCat app. And here on the left side you can then set the main configurations of App Store and Play Store and the access keys. In the second section you can then configure the in-app purchases and subscriptions for App Store and Play Store. And lastly you can also use here something like webhooks. And with the webhook you can then get some subscription data to your backend. So you have your different kind of events that you can listen to. And then you will be notified about for example subscriptions, cancellations and so on. And the best thing is that it unifies here then the App Store, the Play Store and even other platforms if you like. Alright and next we want to fetch then our offers and display them here in our UI so that we can make our purchases. 
And before you can do this, you also need to configure here this API key. Therefore, let's go back to the RevenueCat website and here we click then on API keys and then you can basically copy here this API key, go back to Visual Studio Code and paste then here your API key inside. After this, we can go back to the documentation and we have done all the steps and we are now here at step four. So we need to copy here then the configuration of our subscriptions and in-app purchases to the revenue cat. And this is pretty quickly done. Simply go to your Google Play console and go here to your subscriptions. And then you need to copy here the product IDs and you go then back to your revenue cat app. And here you go then to the product section and then you click here on new and here you put then exactly this identifier inside then select here your store in our case we configure the play store and then click on add and the same thing you do then for all of your subscriptions and in-app purchases so we also take the second one click here again on new paste here our identifier inside select play store and click on add Next, you can then link your products with entitlements. So you can click here on this tab entitlements and here you can then create a new entitlement and an entitlement is basically determining the level of access that you want to give the user to a premium feature or some other features inside of your application. Therefore, you can create an identifier. For example, you want to give your user some access to some courses within your application. Therefore, I name it here all courses. However, you can also, for example, name it beginner courses and you give him only access to your beginner courses within your application, advanced courses or any other premium feature that you want to give him access to. And also you can give it then here a description of what it is then unlocking this entitlement within your application. Click also on add and now you can link here your entitlement, your premium feature to some products. So if they buy this product, then they get this entitlement and we have only two products here right now. So we have a monthly subscription and a yearly subscription. And in our case, if they buy the monthly or yearly subscription, then they get in both times access to all the courses. Therefore, click here on the zero products and here you can then attach some products to your entitlement. So I choose here first of all the monthly subscription and then I add it. And secondly, I click again on attach to also add here the yearly subscription and I also add it. And with this, we have now added here the monthly and yearly subscription to our entitlement all courses. So if they buy these products, then they get access to all of our courses. Let's go back to our entitlements and here you could also add other features. For example, you could add here this basic membership and then you also have another one later for pro membership so that they get access to specific features inside of your application. All right, next we want to go then to the offering sections, which is our last section. And an offering is basically describing what is later displayed on our paywall. So you can package multiple products to one offering. So in this case, we have here the monthly subscription and the yearly subscription, and you put it then to one offering, which is then displayed here at one location in our application. And the cool thing is that you can later change your offerings dynamically inside of RevenueCat. And this changes then also here your paywall inside of your Flutter application. And this can be really helpful so that you can later change here dynamically your products and you can then dynamically test out which packages and products work the best for the conversion of your users. All right, let's now create then one offering with the monthly and yearly subscription. Therefore, you click here on new. Give your paywall some identifiers. So in my case, I call it subscriptions because on this paywall, we only display subscriptions. Also give it here some description and then click on add. And next we want to link to our offering the products that are later displayed on our paywall. However, here you can only add then some packages and not the products directly. And this is because the packages will then combine the products of different platforms. So for example, you create a product on the Apple store and also on the Play store and a package combines then both of them together. So you have then the same product on the Apple store and the same product on the Google Play store and the package simply combines both of the same products. 
And another purpose of a package is to describe the period of excess. So for example, we have a monthly subscription, therefore we put it inside of this monthly package. Then we also have a yearly or annual subscription and this comes then inside of this annual package. And you could also create a lifetime package. So if they buy the product itself on these different stores, then they have lifetime access to a specific feature in your application. Do you want to have your Flutter app, website or backend server completely developed in a high professional manner instead of developing it on your own? Then simply go to heyflutter.com app and we will develop this app for you. So all in all, the product is something which the user buys then on a specific platform. The package describes then how long the user gets then access to a specific feature in our application. And you can basically link then an entitlement or a feature to a specific product. And lastly, we have then the offering which combines then multiple packages into one. And this is then later displayed inside of our Flutter application in a paywall. All right, now we want to create our monthly and annual package. Therefore, we go here back and click on new. And this time the package identifier is predefined because it always describes a period of access. For example, annual, lifetime, monthly. And we want to create a monthly one. Also give it some description and then click on add. Let's also create a second package. This time we choose annual or yearly and give it also some description and click on add. So now we have created the monthly package and the annual package. And the last thing is only to link our product to the packages. Therefore go here inside and we start with the monthly package. And then you can attach here a product. As you can see, you can combine then here many products from different platforms into one package. However, we only have here right now the Play Store product and we want to choose here our monthly product. And then click on attach. And the same thing we also do for our other package. So we go here to the annual package, then we click on attach and then we choose here under Play Store the yearly package. Also click on attach. And with this, we have now created here two packages, the monthly and annual, and we have also here our linked products. And finally, we can go back to our Flutter project. And now we are fetching all of these offerings that we have configured with an revenue cat. And with this, you can now click on the see plans button, which is then calling this method. And then it simply displays here all of your packages and products inside of this paywall widget. And before this can here work, you also need to initialize your purchase API with your API key from RevenueCat. Therefore, you need to go inside of your main file and here you need to call then this ensure initialized and after it, you call then this init method, which we have also defined here within this file. In case you want to test out the in-app purchases within your emulator, then you need to make sure that your device, that your emulator that you choose has the Play Store activated. So not all devices support here the Play Store. However, you can simply choose the Nexus 5 and it has then the Play Store installed. And secondly, to test it out on your emulator, make also sure that you are signed in within the Play Store with your account. So go to the Play Store and sign in to your user account. Next, we want to purchase a package that we have now displayed here within our paywall. And this is basically the step eight of the documentation. And here you also see then the Flutter code, which you need to run for making a purchase. And this is what we want to implement right now. So here we are right now within the paywall widget, which is this widget here on the right side. And if we click then here on one package, then we are going here inside of this callback and we also get the package on which we have clicked. And now we want to call here our purchase API. And here we want to create a new method purchase package and we put the package itself inside. And after we have made then the purchase, we also want to hide here then this bottom sheet so that we show again the normal view. Let me also quickly show you the implementation of the paywall widget. So basically here from our offerings, we determine first of all the packages that we then display here on the right side. So in this case, we have one and a second package. And these packages are then going inside of this paywall widget. And now I will simply show you the implementation. So basically here inside, we have a method build packages where I have then a list view and here I basically display then all the packages and I create then a method to build this individual package, which gets then here also the instance of our package. And from this package, you can then access here the product and here from this product, you can then access the title, the price, and you can also access here the description. 
And this is basically here at the top the title, then we have here below the description and here on the right side I have displayed the price. And if we click here on this package, then we are going inside of this on tap handler and we put then the package inside that we have got here within this build method. We put it inside of this callback that we have defined here inside of our constructor. All right, this was a quick introduction about how the paywall widget works. And now we want to implement here this purchase package method inside of our purchase API class. Therefore, let's create here this purchase package method. And here inside we call then on our purchases package, the purchase package method and put our package inside. And with this method purchase package, we open here up then the Google Play at the bottom and the user can then basically buy here our package and then he simply needs to accept it and then he has bought our package. We also want to return if the purchase was successful, so we return here true and in case we have any errors, then we want to return here false. And that's it, so let's try it out. I click here on this package and you see then here this dialogue, I agree. And then you see that he displays here the information of our product that we can buy. And as you notice, we have here a test card because right now we are here inside of a testing mode. And we are buying here a subscription, which is then charging every five minutes this amount because we are here inside of the testing mode and therefore the times are also more quickly. So instead of a month, we wait only five minutes. And finally, you can then click here on one tap buy. And if you have here the test card enabled, then you also wouldn't be charged. So simply click on it. And now it says here at the top payment successful. And I simply go here further. And now we have subscribed to this product. In RevenueCat, you can also see this purchase. Simply go to your menu and then go to the overview and also make sure that you have the sandbox data enabled so that it is only the testing data. And then you can scroll here down and here you see that we have an app user with the ID anonymous and he has made a purchase of this monthly subscription and he has purchased it four minutes ago. And I also can click here then inside and now if I scroll here down, then you see here more details about this purchase. So you can see when he made this purchase, how much he paid. And you also see here some other data. And at the top right corner, you also see then when the subscription gets renewed and then he will be charged again this price. And by the way, if you want to make here this test purchase with this test card instead of a real purchase, then you also need to do some configuration inside of your Google Play console. Therefore, go here down to the setup section and then to license testing. And here you need to put then the email address inside of the user that is making the test purchase. So in my case, I simply take then the email address that I also have configured here within this Play Store. Also make sure to click here then enter and then you can click on save changes and click on save. And secondly, you also need to go to your app itself. So go to all apps, select your application. And then you need to go here to the testing area and you go to the close testing. Create then here at the top right corner a new track and I call it here for example testers and click on create track. Then scroll here all the way down to the testers tab. And here you can then create an email list of your testers, give it some name and also add here your email address and press enter and then click here on save changes. Also click on create. And here you need to click again on save changes. After this, you can scroll here a bit down and now you need to join here also your test. And I simply copy here the link of the web. And then you can paste this link into your browser and you should see something like this. And lastly, you need to click then on this button, become a tester. In case you face a problem that you cannot join the tester program with this link, then make sure that you wait up to one day and this should then solve your issue in most of the cases. All right, now we made the purchase and after we have made the purchase, then we also want to unlock some features for the user. So in my case, I want to display here then the text that he is inside of the paid plan. However, you can then choose here what you want to display if the user is inside of a paid plan, then you could, for example, unlock some specific features to this user. And to give our user some special access after he have made some purchases, then you simply go here down to the section listening for purchaser updates. And here you see that you can basically call this method and then you get the information of this purchaser if he has bought your subscription or not. 
In my case, I use here the state management provider and then I call here the init method. However, you can also call it inside of the init state method of your stateful widget. This is also working fine. And here we get then basically some purchaser info and we want to update then our purchaser status based on this info. Therefore, let's simply create here this new method. And here inside you can then get the information of your user if he has made some purchases. And over this purchaser info you can then get the active entitlements that are currently active for this user. And I want to access it here then as a list because you could also have multiple entitlements. So each user can have multiple entitlements if you have multiple configured. As you remember, in our case, we have only supplied here one entitlement, all courses, and we want to check now if the user has access to this all courses after he has purchased a product or not. So in my case, it is more simple because I have only one entitlement. Therefore, I can simply check here if the entitlements are empty, then the user has here the entitlement free. And otherwise, we give him the entitlement all courses. And this is basically another class that I have created. So it's an enum. And here we have then the different access levels of our application. All right, so with this statement, I determine right now if he has access to all the courses. And we also store it then here inside of our state. And we want to access now this entitlement if it is free or all courses inside of our subscription page, which is here this page on the right side. And therefore I go here to the subscription page and here inside of this build method, I want to get then access to this entitlement of this provider. So it's basically exactly this entitlement that we have here stored inside of this class. And lastly, we make then use of this entitlement. So in my case, I simply show then here this icon on the right side. So it shows then here you are on a paid plan if he has entitlement all courses. Otherwise it shows here you are on a free plan. And this means that the user has not bought our product. All right, and now we can try it out. So I click here on see plans, then I make here a purchase. I buy this product and then it should say here that we are on the paid plan. In my case, I only forgot to also call here after this update purchase, the notify listeners. And with this, it would then update here also the UI. However, all in all, it is now working and you can then basically decide what you want to do based on this entitlement. So you can then display some specific features if the user has this entitlement. To make sure that you restore here also the purchases that the user has made in case he does hear these actions of restalling his app or logging into multiple devices, then you need to make sure that you give this user a specific app ID. So you can do it once while you call this purchases setup method in the beginning of the application. Or what you also can do is that you can call here this purchases login method and then you specify here an ID for the user. And this is what you normally then store inside of your backend. So you can use simply the ID inside of your backend that you use for your user. And then if he logs into another device or reinstall his app, then he will have still access to the features that he has bought. And of course, you can also call here later then a method logout in case you want to log out the user from his in-app purchases. So far, we have handled subscriptions and next we want to handle also in-app purchases which are made on a one-time basis. And in this case, I want to simply buy a package and then we want to give the user some coins that he can then spend inside of our application. First of all, we need to go to our Google Play console and here we scroll then down to the section products and this time we go inside of the section in-app products. And now you can click here on create product to create a product that the user can buy one time. Again, like before with the subscriptions, make sure that you choose here a product ID that is unique inside of your whole Google Play console account. Next, you need to scroll here down and then you need to give a name and a description. So I call it here 10 coins that the user can buy. And be aware that the name and description are later displayed publicly. And lastly, you can then click here on set price. So in my case, I give it here a price of 9 euros. Again, like before, you see then here all the prices of the other countries and currencies. And then you can click on apply prices. Make sure to click on save and then also click on activate. And now if you go here back to the in-app products, then you should see that we have here this active 10 coins. 
And similarly to this, I have also created here now a second package with 100 coins and I also have chosen then a different price for this package. After this, go back to Revenue Cat and here you go then to the product section and now we need to add here all of our products that we have added to our Google Play console. Therefore, I click here on New. And like before with the subscriptions, simply copy here the product ID and paste it here inside and as a store you select then Play Store and click on Add. And the same thing we also do here with our other product ID, simply copy it, paste it here inside and also select Play Store and Add. This time we don't give here any entitlements because these are coins that the user can later use within our application to buy then something inside of the application itself. Instead, what we want to do is we want to click here on Offerings and now we want to create here an offer and I call it basically 10 coins. I also give it some description and then I click here on Add. And now you can click here on this zero packages Let's add here a new package and this time you don't choose here monthly or annual, instead you choose lifetime because it is a one-time purchase. Give it also some name and then click here on add. Next you also need to link here your products, so click here on zero products, attach your product and then choose here play store and we want to attach then this 10 coins product and also click here on attach. And secondly, we also want to do the same thing for our 100 coins. Therefore, I go to the offering section and here I create then a new offer. I call it this time 100 coins. I also give it some description and then I click on add. Again, like before, you click here on zero packages, click on new, choose again here lifetime as your option, give it some description and click on add. And lastly, we need to link then our product of our 100 coins. So click here on attach, then go to the Play Store. And this time we select here then our 100 coins and click on attach. All right, so now we have created here two more offerings that we also want to display then within our application. Therefore, let's go inside of our purchase API class. And here on top, I want to create a new class where I define then the coins and basically I define then here the IDs of our coins that we have defined in Revenue Cat. So make sure that the IDs that I have here defined are the same. So in my case, 10 coins and 100 coins and I have simply put them here then inside. And secondly, we want to create another method inside of this purchase API class. So before we have created this fetch offers and this is always giving here us the current offer. And this means it always returns here the current offer that we have defined in Revenue Cat. And in this case, the current offer are the subscriptions. However, what we want to access are here the 10 coins and 100 coins that are not our current offers. And to do this, we want to create here a new method. And here we can then basically fetch our offers by their IDs that we have defined in Revenue Cat. And we want to call here then this method fetch offers and we will later manipulate it so that we return here all the offers at once. And in the end, this should then return us all the offers that we have configured here in Revenue Cat. So in this case, it should return us three offers. And we want to simply check then if the offer is inside of this IDs list. And therefore, I basically check if the offer identifier is contained inside of this IDs list that we later here supply. And lastly, I want to change here the implementation of this fetch offers method a bit. So instead of fetching always the current offer, we want to change here the implementation. So we can set here a flag if we want to fetch all the offers or not. And in case this flag is set, then we are going here inside and we basically return then all the offers that we have stored in Revenue Cat. And otherwise, if it is not at all, then we want to return our current offer. And this is exactly the code that we have written before. Now, if you click here on see plans within the subscription, then you see that we define here all the current offers because now he is fetching really all the offers inside of our subscription page. However, we don't want to show here the coins on our subscription page. Instead, we want to show only the current offer, which are here our subscriptions. And therefore, I go simply to the subscription page and then I go here down to this method fetch offers. And here I want to change it then that we only fetch the current offer. And now if I click here again on see plans, then we only get here the current offer that we have defined within Revenue Cat. 
Alright, this is about the subscription and now we go to the coins because we want to display right now with this method fetch offers by IDs the coins and we want to purchase then these coins as a one-time payment. Therefore on the second page of our coins if I click on this get more coins then we call here this fetch offers method which I have created inside of another page. And here I have basically copied the whole implementation of what we have done before with the subscriptions. And this time we don't want to fetch here our current offer. Instead we want to fetch our offers by the IDs of our coins. And therefore I put here simply the IDs of our coins inside that we have defined before. Let's also try it out. So I click here on this get more coins and now you see that only the coins packages are here displayed. And now we also want to purchase our coins if we click here on this package and we want to change here a bit the implementation. So we purchase our package and then we want to check if it was successful. And in case it was successful then we want to call here another method at coins. And this is what I create here in my case inside of this provider. So I create here a new method at coins package. And then I check here basically for the package offering identifier. And here you can then basically check what package he has bought. For example, this 10 coins package or this 100 coins package. And then you add here the 10 coins or 100 coins to your state. So in my case, I have simply created here then the coins in the state. Let's also try it out. So I select here the 100 coins package and now I make this one time payment to buy the coins. And you see then here immediately that we have our 100 coins and you could also buy here more coins if you like. So I buy here more coins and now we have here 200 coins in our application. And if you like you can also create this button to spend your coins again. And therefore if I click here on this button I call here this method spend coins. And here I basically go then inside of my provider. Then we simply decrement here our coins. So I basically decrement the coins by 10. So be aware right now we are changing the coins only inside of the application and normally what you want to have is that you store then the coins on your back end and therefore the best thing is if you implement the webhooks for your back end so that you can then get here the purchases of your user and if you detect then a purchase of the user then you will simply add the coins inside of your back end and then you will give him here access also within the application to these coins. However, the coins are mainly stored then inside of your backend. And if you click then later on this button to spend his coins, then you would make a request to your backend and there you would decrease then the coins and give him then some privileges what he can do with the coins. Therefore notice right now if you hot restart your application, then you see that we have no coins and this is because you need to store the coins on your backend. How to set up in-app purchases and in-app subscriptions for your Flutter app. I will show you exactly how you can monetize your Flutter app by displaying some packages to the users that they can buy as a one-time payment or on a subscription basis which is then automatically renewed on a monthly or yearly basis. And we will also use RevenueCat for managing these subscriptions. Also in this tutorial we will not use the official Flutter package in a purchase and this has one main reason. For the validation of purchases you need to write a complete backend server that communicates with the Apple Store server and the Google Play server. Instead we will use RevenueCat, a better variant if you want to save time because their server will handle this purchase validation for you automatically so you can focus on building your Flutter app instead of taking days and weeks to implement also the backend server. All in all we will use the official documentations of Flutter and RevenueCat for integrating in-app purchases and subscriptions by going through three simple steps. Firstly we will set up in-app purchases and subscriptions for iOS. On top of it we will configure then Revenue Cat. Secondly, we will integrate in app purchases and subscriptions into the Flutter app. And lastly, we will give the user access to special features in your Flutter app in case they have the right subscription status. Before we follow these three steps, we will quickly implement the purchases Flutter package into our Flutter app. Therefore, I have created two buttons and we only need to call this method purchase product and then we need to specify the ID of the product that we want to buy. And the same thing we also do for the subscription and also specify the ID of this subscription. To make this work, go to your PubSpec YAML file and under your dependencies add the purchases Flutter package. Also inside of your iOS folder, go to the pod file 
and command this platform version out and set the version to at least 11. Next, right click on your iOS folder and choose open in Xcode. Inside the runner folder and runner target, you need to make sure that you set the iOS version to at least 11. Also go to the signing and capabilities tab and click on plus and add the capability in-app purchase and this should then appear here at the bottom. This is basically the main functionality of your Flutter app and now we only need to follow the official documentation of RevenueCat for also doing the configuration inside the App Store. So we go to the fourth step of this documentation and in our case we want to set up the App Store Connect for iOS and here as a prerequisite for this video is that you have already created one app inside of the App Store. If you have never uploaded an app to the App Store, then check out this video where you can learn how to do this. After this, go to your app and then go to the agreements by clicking on these three dots and choose agreements. And here it is very important that the paid apps agreement status is active. Otherwise, you cannot do any in-app purchases with your Flutter app. In case you have not yet set this up, click on set up tax and banking. Then you add a bank account with all the information of your bank account so that you can also get the in-app purchases payments later. Tick the checkbox and then you add your bank account. Next, you need to fill out the tax forms for your country. In my case, I also need to select then the US tax forms and say that I have no business in US. And then you go further, you download maybe this form so that you can check it out what it says. And lastly, you enter some personal information of yourself. And when you have filled out this whole form, then you also need to give a signature and submit this form. Go back in the browser. And now you also need to add all the contact information. So I basically add my own contact information. And then you add the same contact information to all the other positions also, or you can also choose other contact information. Go again back in the browser, refresh the browser. And then it should say processing. After Apple has reviewed it, the status should turn to active so that you can use in-app purchases in your Flutter app. Next, we want to configure these in-app purchases that we can later buy in our Flutter app. Therefore, go to your app. In this menu, scroll a bit down and choose in-app purchases. Now click on this create button or this plus icon at the top to configure your in-app purchase product. This product can be consumable, which means the product can be purchased multiple times, such as coins, or it can be non-consumable, which means the product can be purchased only a single time, such as a book. In our case, we choose consumable so that we can buy it multiple times. Next, you can give your product an internal name, which is not visible to other people. Also for this product, we need to give a product ID and this product ID needs to be unique among all of your apps in your app store. And therefore it is common to use here this notation. So first of all, the app name, then the price of this product, the duration, and also some other information optionally. So in my case, I take this product ID with the app name and the price, and then I click on create. Now scroll on this page a bit down to the price schedule and then you can give your product any price that is then a one-time payment and you also can click on other currencies to see how this price will be then in other countries. All right, let's scroll further down. You also need to add some App Store localization. So click on add localization. Here you need to define two things. First of all, the display name that is publicly visible and also some description for your product. And this is also publicly visible and then click on create. And finally, scroll down to the screenshot section. Here you need to upload a screenshot of your product or of the purchase page or payroll page so that Apple can see what product you are selling. And if you just do it for testing purposes, then you can just upload any image that has 640 by 920 pixels. Also, you need to scroll all the way up again, and then you need to make sure that you click on the save button. And after this, we can go back to our in-app purchases. And now this product ID that you have configured should have the status ready to submit. Also, I have configured a second product that the user can buy inside the app, in this case, 100 coins, and also make sure that then the product ID is unique. So here we have 100 instead of 10. Next to the one-time payment of coins, we can also have subscriptions and therefore we need to scroll down and create a new subscription group. I call this subscription group movie subscription, which is only an internal name. And then I click on create. 
Inside the subscription group, scroll all the way down to the App Store localization and then click on Create. Here you set the subscription group display name, which is publicly visible when the user buys this subscription product. And also this app name is publicly visible. So if you want to change it from purchase Flutter in this case, then you can also use your own name and you can modify it. So I call it Netflix and then I click on create. And secondly, we can add to this subscription group some subscriptions, therefore click here on create. Again, give your subscription an internal name and a product ID and the product ID consists of the app name, the price and the duration of the subscription, in this case one month. After this, click on create. Here we scroll a bit down to the subscription duration. We choose one month. After each month, there's a new payment circle. Also scroll a bit more down and here you can define the subscription price. So I click on add subscription price. Then choose here any price and click on next. Here you see then how the prices are for all the other countries. You need to scroll all the way down and at the end you click on next and also then on confirm. For this subscription, we also need to add some localization. As before, this name and description is publicly visible if the user purchased this product. And when you are done, click on add. Scroll all the way down, go to the screenshot section and upload a screenshot of your product or of the purchase page. And when you are done, scroll all the way up and click on the save button. And then you go back to the subscriptions. And now if you scroll down, then you should see your subscription and also that it is in the status of ready to submit. Let's also scroll up and click on this plus icon. And this time we configure a yearly subscription and then click on create. Here the only difference is then that you choose for the subscription duration one year. After you have completed the configuration for the yearly subscription, as I have shown before with the monthly subscription, then also the status of this yearly subscription should be ready to submit. One thing to notice about our subscriptions is that we have added both subscriptions, the monthly and also the yearly, to the same subscription group. Inside of a subscription group, users can only subscribe to one subscription to the monthly or the yearly, but not to both. In case you want to have multiple independent subscriptions, then you need to add here a new subscription group. And then inside of this new subscription group, your new subscription would be independent from the other subscriptions that you have inside of your app. Now that we have completed the fourth step to set all the products up in the App Store, we can continue with the official documentation from the first step. First, you need to go to revenuecat.com and create a new free account. Fill in your information and click on sign up. Next, you need to enter any project name such as your app name and then you click on create project. Inside RevenueCat, you can configure the App Store for iOS, the Play Store for Android and also other stores. And the great thing is that whenever a purchase is made over the App Store or the other stores, then the RevenueCat backend server will validate these purchases automatically for you, so you don't need to write your own backend. In our case, we set up the App Store for iOS. Here inside, you need to set your app name. Inside Xcode, you can copy the bundle ID from your app and then you paste it here inside. Next, we need to get the app-specific shared secret from the App Store. Therefore, you can click here on this I and then you need to follow here these steps. So first of all, you need to go to the App Store Connect page, click on My Apps and choose the app for which you have configured the in-app purchases. Inside the menu, go to the subscriptions and scroll here all the way down to the app specific shared secret and click on manage. Then click on generate and here you need to copy then this shared secret. After this, go back to RevenueCat, click on the set secret button, paste this value inside and click on set. Next, click on the in-app purchase key configuration. This file is needed so that RevenueCat can validate the purchases on their backend server for us. Therefore, back in App Store Connect, you scroll all the way up and click on Users and Access. Here at the top, click on Keys and then on the left side, choose In-App Purchases and click on Generate In-App Purchase Key. Give it any name and click on Generate. Now under Active, you should see your generated key and you can then download this key a single time. So click on Download. Back on the RevenueCat website, drag then this downloaded key into this Dropbox. Next, go back to the App Store Connect and choose App Store Connect API and click on Generate API Key. Give it any name and for the access, choose Sales and Reports. 
and click on generate. After the generation, you find the issue ID that you basically need to copy. So I click on this copy button. Back in Revenue Cat, you scroll a bit down and here where the issue ID is, you need to paste this key inside. And lastly, and most importantly, scroll all the way up and click on this button, save changes. And finally, we need to connect RevenueCat to our Flutter app, therefore click on API keys. Scroll all the way down until you find the app that you have created in RevenueCat and here click on show key and copy this key. Then go to the main file of your Flutter project and here inside you create this purchase configuration where you paste your API key inside. Also, we need to make use of this configuration, therefore inside the main method we use this configuration. With this, we have completed the steps one till the step three of the official documentation. And now we can move on to the fifth step to configure our products in RevenueCat. This step is pretty easy. Go to RevenueCat and then go to the product section. And here inside, you need to link all the products that the users can buy from the App Store, from the Play Store, etc. In our case, we have only the App Store, therefore click here on New. And here we only need to paste all the products ID inside that we have created before inside of the App Store. So if you go back to the App Store, then you can go to the in-app purchases. And here you find then this product ID that you copy. And then you paste it here inside and click on Add. In the same way as you have added this product with this product identifier, you also need to add then all the other three products. So back in the App Store, let's copy the product ID of the 100 coins, paste it here inside and click on Add. With this, we have linked both in-app purchases from the App Store. Let's also click on New. And then inside of the App Store, let's go to the Subscription tab. Scroll down to the subscription group and I go into the subscription group, then scroll again down and here you find then the IDs of your subscriptions and you basically copy also these product IDs, paste it inside and add them. And lastly, we copy the product ID of the yearly subscription and also we add then in Revenue Cat this new identifier. And with this, we have added all four products that we have configured before inside the App Store. And the last step is to take the product IDs that you want to buy inside of your Flutter app. So we take the 100 coins and also the monthly subscription. And then go to your Flutter app to the line where we buy our products. And here you just need to paste then the right product ID inside, in this case 100 coins that we want to buy. And also here the subscription, so I exchange it by this real product ID. And now we can click on this buy coins button and then this pop-up will appear where you can buy these 100 coins and notice this is only a test purchase. So if I click on purchase, then this is not a real purchase. And after you have signed in with your Apple ID, then you click on sign in and you see that the payment was successful. And the same works also for the buy subscription button. Here we can also subscribe to this product. Again, it's only a test purchase, so this is not a real purchase. And then you see that the subscription was also successful. Notice to make these test purchases work on your iOS device. Therefore, you need to go to the App Store Connect website and here for your app, go then to the users and access section. And here at the bottom, you find Sandbox where you can add some testers. So let's click on this plus icon. Here inside, fill out all the information of your test account. The most important part is email and also the password that you need to remember. And after this, click on the invite button. And now you should see here your test account that you can now use for the in-app purchases. Therefore, on your real iOS device, whenever you now click on this buy coins button or buy subscription button, then you need to sign in with your Apple ID and password. For the Apple ID, use then the email that you have used for creating this sandbox test account and also enter the password that you have created before for this test account and then click on OK. And now you can see that your test account appears inside of this purchase dialog. And now if you click on this purchase button, then this is only a test purchase. Make sure to enter again your password of this test account and then click on sign in. And now you see that the purchase was successful. If you want to test out the in-app purchases on an iOS simulator instead of a real device, then you also need to follow here this documentation where you set then these configuration files and you need to follow here all the steps so that it also works on your iOS simulator. And finally, inside of RevenueCat, you can go to this overview tab and then you can see here the overview of all of your purchases. In this case, we made some test purchases, therefore click here on Sandbox Data and then you can scroll here a bit down and you see here in this case that we have made some purchases. 
and you can click then on one of these users. And here inside, if you scroll down, then you see the customer history with all the products that this user has bought. Next, after a successful purchase, we also want to give the user some benefits inside of our app. Therefore, let's go here to the top inside of our state and let's create two fields. First of all, if the user is subscribed inside of our app and has purchased the subscription and also how many coins the user has. Both of these information we want to display then inside of the body of our app. So first of all, I display here this lock icon and the coins. And in case the user has subscribed, then we display simply another icon. First of all, let's start with the coins. So each purchase can be successful or also it can fail. So here it can fail if it goes into the catch block and the same thing also for the other one. And after a successful purchase, we simply add then some coins to our app. With this, if we click here on this buy coins button and then if the user buys some coins and after the purchase was successful, then you should see that the coins are also added inside of our app. Of course, for a real project, you wouldn't add the coins directly after the purchase inside of the app itself. Instead, you would add the coins inside of your backend and therefore you can also use RevenueCat easily. So you can go here down and then you can add some integrations. And here you have some webhooks with which your server can listen to new purchases and after a purchase then the server can add to your user account some coins. Another way of giving certain privileges to the user after he has bought a product are these entitlements that are handled by the RevenueCat server. So for each product that the user buys, you can add some entitlements. Therefore, let's go here to the left side to the entitlement section. As you can see, an entitlement represents a level of access. So you give the user a specific access inside of your app. Therefore, let's create here a new entitlement. And here for the identifier, we want to use then all movies, which means we give the user access to all movies in our app when they get this entitlement. Also add here any description and then click on add. And lastly, we need to link this entitlement then to some products. Therefore, click here on the zero products and then you can add some products to this entitlement. So in our case, the user should get all the movies as an access in our app in case they have bought the subscription of one month. So I use here the product ID of the one month subscription and click on add. And also we do the same thing for the yearly subscription here in case they buy the yearly subscription, then they also should get access to all the movies in our app. And therefore I click here on add. Next inside the Flutter app, whenever the user bought one of these subscription, the monthly or yearly subscription, then he gets the entitlement all movies. And inside our Flutter app, we can basically check if the customer has this entitlement and then we can give him some access to specific features. So let's copy this entitlement. In our Flutter app, inside the init state method, we listen to customer changes. And whenever the customer changes its information, then we call this update customer status method. And here we get then every time the new information of our customer. And from this customer, we can then access all the entitlements. And we want to only get the active entitlements that are currently active for this user. And here we want to check then if the entitlement is this all movies entitlement. So this is basically this entitlement that we have created before for our subscription products. And now we want to check if this entitlement that we create here is basically not null. So if it is existing, this means then that the user has subscribed and we can then update our field in our state. And when this field is updated, then we change this icon from this lock icon to this paid icon. Let's also try it out when I click here on buy subscription. And then if we click on subscribe, you see that the subscription purchase was successful. And now that the user is subscribed to our app, you also see that this icon changed to this paid icon. And of course, if this is subscribe boolean flag is true, then you can give your user any specific features in your app to which he has an access while the others have not access to this. And finally, we want to preserve the entitlements of a user if he logs in, logs out or switches the device. For this, you can use the app user ID inside of your configuration 
or you can also use the login and logout methods. And now whenever you log in this user, that is maybe an ID from your backend, then if the user makes any purchases with this user ID, it will be saved on the server. And now the user can log out again, log in in another device and still have all the privileges of our entitlements. And finally, next to the entitlements, we also have in Revenue Cat offerings and offerings are multiple products that are then displayed together on a paywall. So let's create one paywall. Let's create one offering by clicking here on new. As an identifier, I choose subscriptions. I want to have an offering where we display all the subscriptions. Also give a description and then click on add. With this, we have our subscription offering, our subscription paywall, and a subscription paywall also has multiple packages. So let's click here on zero packages, and then we can add a new package. A package itself holds multiple products, whereas we have, for example, created this gold monthly scoop product on the App Store, and the same product also exists on the Google Play Store. And therefore, you combine both of these products that are the same inside of one package. In our case, we only have the App Store, therefore we add only one product to one package. But usually if you have then multiple stores supported, then you have for each store one product added to your package. And lastly, once you have then created multiple packages, so we have, for example, the monthly subscription, the annual subscription, and also maybe the coins, and each of them is then a package and you can then decide what you want to display on the paywall. You can then display the monthly package and the annual package, or you can also change it to different variants of what you want to display on the paywall widget. So let's do it practically. We can add a package and here we add a package for the monthly subscription and I also give it a description and then I click on add. And now you see we have this monthly package and to a monthly package we can then link multiple products. So let's click on zero products and attach our product. In our case we have only one monthly subscription that we can link to this package. So let's go here to this monthly subscription and attach it to this package. In case you have the same product, this monthly subscription next to the app store also on other stores, then you would attach here multiple other products from other stores. In our case, we only have the App Store, so let's go here back and let's also add another package. And this time the identifier is not monthly, we want to create an annual package, also give it a description and click on add. And as before, we have then here this annual package with the zero products. Let's click on the zero products and to this package we attach then a product. And here we want to choose then the yearly subscription and we attach it to this package. Let's also go here at the top back. So all in all, we have created one offering that is called subscriptions. Inside of this offering, we have two packages. We have the monthly package and we also have the annual package. And now we can use this subscriptions identifier of this offering to display it inside of our app. First of all, let's look at the result that we want to create. So we have the see plans button. If we click on it, then we have a pop up. And here inside we have two different packages. This is our paywall. We have the monthly package and we also have the yearly package. And these are exactly the two packages that we have defined before inside of our offering. Let's also look at the implementation. First of all, we use the purchases API to get all the offerings. So the offerings are basically paywalls. In our case, we only have one single paywall that we want to display in our app. Inside Revenue Cat, for all of your offerings, you can choose one offering that is the current offering. So I have added here one more offering just for test purposes and you can see that you can make this offering to the current offering. However, we want to keep it for the subscription that this is our current offering. And now you can access the current offering and we want to make sure that it is not null. So in our case, it exists already. So we will go into the else case. And from this offering, we get then all the packages. In our case, we have added two packages, this monthly package and also the yearly package. And lastly, we display them these packages. Therefore, I have created a bottom sheet and inside of this paywall widget, we get then all of these packages. And let's also look here at the implementation. So if we go down, we have a method where we display then all these packages. And therefore I have created this build package method. And here we take then out of the package, the product. And from this product, we can then access the title, which is then here displayed at the top. From this product, we can also access the price, which is here then displayed on the right side. And also the description, 
which is then displayed under this title. And lastly, if we click on any package, then we call this on click package handler where we put the package inside on which we have clicked. And this is basically what I have defined here at the top. So let's look in the paywall widget also at the on clicked package implementation. And here we call then the purchase API. And in case of calling purchase product, we call this time purchase package. And here you put then the package inside what you want to buy. Let's also try it out. I click here on one of the packages. And now as you can see, you can subscribe to this package.